Happy New Year! Do not, under any circumstances, make New Year's resolutions. Huh? <laughs> well, I'm going to explain it. This is Monday Mornings with Mark. Hi, I'm your host, Mark J. Schmidt of Remax Country and MoveMeMark.com. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe to our channel on YouTube and make sure you like us on Facebook so you don't miss out. So, let me wish you a Happy New Year. It is 2020, or 2020, depending on which camp you're in on that. And uh, I know for one thing, it's going to be a fantastic year for you. Uh, and you're going to make it happen. And you're not going to make it happen with New Year's resolutions. Now, why would I say that? Aren't New Year's resolutions a good thing? Well, I wrote down some notes here about why you really shouldn't use New Year's resolutions and what you can do to make sure you get everything you want in 2020. So first, why not New Year's resolutions? Well, first, New Year's resolutions can turn into a wish list. You know, you say, well, I'd like to do this and I'd like to do that, uh, but they're really not concrete. You need something concrete if you're going to accomplish anything in life. And just saying, I'm going to do something is not going to make it happen for you. So that's number one. They're a wish list. Number two, they don't always work and they don't always work because they're a wish list. One of the biggest ones, and I think this is the biggest reason why New Year's resolutions don't work, is because it takes too long. It's too long of a time period. When you give yourself an entire year to do something, chances are it's not going to get done. So I wrote down some awesome things you can do to make sure that whether whatever you want to accomplish in 2020, if you want to buy a home or lose weight or make more money, you're going to be able to do it. It's not just making a resolution. These are concrete steps you can take that are going to get you where you want to be. So let's go to number one. Number one is first, Figure out what you want, whatever it is, whether it's, you know, say you want to buy a new house. I sell real estate. I should probably throw that in there. Say you want to buy a new house or you want to lose weight. Like I said, make more money. Whatever you think it is, you have to figure out what you want first. And the most important thing is you want to write it down. You know, when you just say something out loud, that's fine. But when you write it down, it gives it weight. So that's why you want to write down what you're looking to do. Number two, you want to put a plan together. What do you need to do to actually accomplish your goal? So let's take the example of buying a house. The first thing you might say to yourself is, you know, how much money do I need to save? Do I need to pay off any debt? Do I need to improve my credit? Uh, where do I want to live? You know, what kind of house do I want to buy? There's lots of things that you need to do first before you can actually go buy that house. And this is where you plan for that. I heard someone say this recently and it's absolutely fantastic. I want to share with you right now. This person uh, said, don't set goals, form habits. Don't set goals, form habits. See, it's one thing to say, I'm going to save $10,000 to put down on a house. But it's a completely different thing to say, okay, I'm going to set aside 5% of my income until I have $10,000 for a new house. See, that's a concrete step you can take. Every paycheck, you know that you're taking that money out. Now, just saying, oh, I'm going to have $10,000. It's nice to say these things out loud. It's not going to get you where you need to be. Um, the third thing and this is critical, is you need to track your results. If you don't track your results, you don't know what you're doing. And one of the reasons why I say that New Year's resolutions don't work, remember I said earlier that it's too long of a time period? It is too long of a time period. And the shorter the time period, the better. So set a goal for yourself, give yourself that action step, say, okay, I want to have $1,000 saved by you know this date and make that date like two weeks from now or a month from now, whatever it's got to be. And then you'll be able to track how you're doing relative to that goal. You see, the shorter the time period, the better. If you have a long time period, a lot of people are optimistic and sometimes they're not optimistic. But what happens is they go and they say, OK, well, you know what? I haven't done anything in January and I haven't done anything in February, but I still have 10 months. So it's no big deal. I can still make my New Year's resolutions. No, no, no. Shrink that time period. Don't give yourself the whole year. Give yourself a month or two months or three months, but not the whole year. Think about it this way. Have you ever gone on vacation 
And you know how you get so much done right before you go on vacation? Because you have to. You know that you have to go and cancel the mail and make sure that you're, you get your reports in and your work is done, whatever, because you're not gonna be able to do it once you leave. And that's the same with this. Compressing your time is gonna give you that extra bit of motivation and is gonna help you get where you need to be. So those are the three things you need to do. Figure out what you want, put a plan together, and then track your progress. And make sure you've got a short time period. Now listen, if you have questions about making sure 2020 is a fantastic year for you, or if you have questions about buying or selling a home, please visit my website. You can find me at www.movememark.com. Thanks so much for watching. If you missed last week's episode, I've got it right here for you. And here's another episode that YouTube thinks you should watch. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that circle and subscribe so you don't miss out. And I'll see you next week for more Monday Mornings with Mark. You have a great week.